Hi, I'm Gus Dapperton, and you're listening to WRSU FM, New Brunswick, the home of Rutgers Radio. I wanted to ask you about production, because once Orca comes out in September, it'll be now, like, what, the second full album that you've produced for yourself? Mm -hmm. Uh, What's, like, the most rewarding or, like, your favorite part of the production process for you? Um, I mean... I I love producing. It's probably my my I guess it's probably my strongest uh, suit because I started I started producing before I started like playing guitar and like uh, instruments and singing and whatnot. So I guess I feel like that's um, the easiest thing for me to do is like go in and uh, kind of arrange the whole track and like uh, sequence all the drums and all the instruments and whatnot. Uh, but I guess. I guess just like writing a song on the guitar, the piano and the vocals, and then just like adding the the drums in and like giving it a a beat is probably the most rewarding just to hear it like come together. Do you have any like of your favorite producers that you feel influenced a lot of the stuff on Orca? Not on, not on like, I kind of feel like I, I, I used to really idolize a lot of like, old school hip hop producers like Mad Lib and Jay Dilla and MF Doom and uh, whatnot. And I feel like I, I like got obsessed with like sequencing drums and, and drum patterns and everything. So what I, what I do is I'll like write songs um, acoustically and then I'll like put all the drums in and then I'll like play the drums out live afterwards. Mm-hmm. So So, like, there's not a lot of, like, rock producers that, like, it. I don't even, like, because I feel like I don't even really know what a lot of, like, like, alternative and rock producers do. I feel like they're more, like, engineering and just kind of pointing, like, where certain things should should go less than the actual, like, in the computer sort of producing. How do you feel like your process has changed since your debut album came out? Um... I'm definitely was have been more focused on like writing songs from front to back on a piano or acoustic guitar, something that's really durable and I can kind of just pick up wherever. Mm-hmm. And I've like really focused on writing everything and then coming in and recording and producing it as opposed to in the past where I usually like, I'll just start a song, like I'll start a loop and then like build on top of it this one I was kind of just more focused on writing the whole the whole song so yeah I just wanted like when you take the songs apart I just wanted them to be really strong um like yeah just like when it's stripped down I wanted all the songs to be really strong that way as well and your new singles um they seem at least to me to my interpretation they seem to really touch on themes of um like grief and uncertainty um, especially for a aid with mental health. Um, mm-hmm. So like what kind of themes do you find yourself coming back to the most or writing about the most? Um, this whole album is, is like along the lines of that theme. It's supposed to be sort of, um, you know, uh, talking about someone who is sort of like self-destructive and lost in the world. And then these people around them that reel them, reel them back in. Um, and it's about like, people hurting and then people healing and also people helping. So I, it's, uh, I've been like really obsessed with writing that and writing about those emotions. Cause like, since I, I used to not, and uh, I had been neglecting writing about those and I usually am writing like more upbeat, happier things, but I guess I just never even thought to like kind of write about pain and suffering and whatnot. And um ever since I started doing that with this project, it felt really good. And I, I did also want it to be a really cohesively put together album. So um, I've been pretty uh, like obsessed with writing about that. And I have trouble like finding things that are like therapeutic to me. And that's like, that's like the only thing that's therapeutic to me really. What song do you think was like the most cathartic to write? Maybe, um, the song Medicine or the song Ant- Antidote. Oh, and I only hope he's listening. The song 
songs like Fill Me Up Anthem, you have this really like gritty quality to your voice. That's really cool. And I feel like we don't hear a lot with people in your genre. Mm -hmm. So how, like what kind of artists do you feel like influenced your vocal style and what was kind of like your journey to get here? Yeah, well, um, I guess what encouraged me to start singing was like hearing people who were almost like bad at singing sing anyways and like ha like young lean or something and like i feel like he's not particularly like a good singer but he would just do it anyways and like made catch songs and stuff and um uh, even like like tyler, tyler the creator and stuff and and uh just seeing people who weren't like i guess normally singers sing anyways and like inspire me also like spooky black is like has you know he has an amazing voice but like um I just I guess just seeing like people with smaller ranges like even Spooky Black like he he's like has such a, an amazing voice but he still sings in like a a smaller like range like as opposed to going super high and super low so I I like was like oh like I guess you know I could try singing and and that inspired me to first start singing and then as I like got on and I was learning and just listening like Michael Jackson uses like used super crazy dynamic range when he sung and would like sing super quietly and soft and low and high and then like also bell and like scream and like have this crazy rasp and like um I've just I just once I started doing more of that I I kind of realized and understood the importance of like dynamic range on songs meaning like really soft moments and then really harsh moments medium moments so I I think there's just I I don't like I'd rather listen to a song with like lots of dynamics as opposed to a song with like just that's like one way the whole time I guess. I watched your I forgot the title of the interview but it was a uh, records of my life I think it was yeah. and, um and you talked about a lot of your influences and it was fascinating um so what's one album that you wish you had written? The thing is I feel like the thing is, I don't even, th I don't wish I had written any of them because I'm such a big fan. I wouldn't change like a thing about them. Um, but I guess like, uh, I feel like, like, uh, like Arcade Fire, the, um, the suburbs, that album is just so good. Like I probably, I guess I had, I probably guess I had, I wish I had written that song, the, that song, the suburbs, but like, I, I would, you know, I, I think that's like one of my favorite songs and I wouldn't change anything about it. I think it's so good. I think The Suburbs was actually the first song I ever learned on the guitar. Really? Yeah. I pretty much, oh, whenever I go to like write a song, I like start, I'll like start playing something and then I'll end up just like playing The Suburbs and I'm like, fuck, like how, I'm trying <laughs> to like write a new song and just end up writing like The Suburbs. If you could have any artist, it could be like Alive or Dead, but just any artist cover one of your songs in their style, what artist would it be in what song? Mm -hmm. Maybe I saw um, Chris Cornell cover uh, this, uh, the Sinead O'Connor song, Not Nothing Compares to You and like, he did like acoustic and sung it. Maybe, maybe, maybe him or um, even just like The Weeknd or something. Someone has like a super sick voice. I don't know. Do you have any parting words? I hope everyone's safe out there. And my album comes out September 18th. If you want to listen to it. If you don't want to listen to it, that's okay too. <laughs>